Hi. I am in the new place and the move, everything has just gone unbelievably horrible. It's just been like one big nightmare and a half. And um, I'm here now. The The whole move day did not go well. The towing guy, um, somebody badmouthed me to the towing guy and I think it kind of changed his attitude, but he became very belligerent. Uh, one of my wheel covers is gone. I had to like borrow like a yucky one from somebody else. He didn't. He took my solar stakes and didn't uh, nail the solar down. He tore my tent and just a lot of damage. Ruined my. He whipped my internet cables through the conduit. So both of them are destroyed. Real, real expensive booster cables. Both destroyed. Uh, so I can't even get on the internet, and somebody was kind enough to, like, order another one for me, so eventually I'm going to have internet again, which is really hard, because when you're down and disabled, that's, you know, something wonderful to have, and it's just been one thing, the list is really too long to name here, but, um, I would say the main thing, he left the trailer, like, crooked, we're talking... He left it so it was like that, you know, where it was real low in the front. I had to walk downhill to get to the steps over there, and I had to walk, um, you know, try to hold on with my feet. And within, like, two or three hours of that, after it came, I told him I wanted it level, and he just got belligerent and nasty with me about it. That's part of any trailer-moving job is to level the trailer. And so, evidently, he's like the type that would be a plumber but not carry a pipe wrench. And um, it was mostly, I think the guy has a capability, but a really, really bad, bad, nasty attitude. And so, he wouldn't do it. And my door was literally like two inches of light were there at the top of my front door because it couldn't close. And it's not safe to leave it open, so I had somebody seal me in. But it took days, days and days and days to find somebody to come level it so I could get out it, so I could go outside, so I could leave. And for the first couple of days, I was in too much pain from trying to walk on the floor that I was up crying all night, up crying all night. And I even fell like a couple of times because you see how there's like nothing to hang on to between the edge of the couch and that door over there. So I I fell a couple times, like once in here and once out there, but fortunately I didn't get hurt. I, I do have like some kind of pain when I kind of fell out there. It hurt my hip, but I, I'm not injured from it. But still, it's just the suffering that I went through trying to walk on a crooked floor. You have no idea. If you don't have fibromyalgia, probably no problem, but trying to live in a home where you're on a crooked floor like that with fibromyalgia, it just it causes your feet to curl up and seize and spasm and pain goes with that and it was also starting to cause pain in my waist and back and all that even when I slept I didn't think the bed was really that crooked but then the last night of it I I was twisting in the bed trying and it felt like I was falling off the edge but I wasn't it was just the trailers crooked and so that caused more problems so I finally got a really good RV guy out here to straighten it that was that came to like $216 that was more than I was supposed to pay him for the towing. And then some really lovely person um, came to the rescue and, ha well, it's a long story actually. Um, the two days after I moved in here, the lady that had this place, um, she had, before I moved, she had brought new people in um, that were going to help out around here and stuff like that. And she brought them in a couple of weeks before I moved in. And then she told me about it like one or two days before the move. She said, I have new people. They're going to help you out. They're going to help you move in, blah, blah, blah. And um, she didn't tell me not to move in. She, told, she was talking about how excited she was that I was coming. And I told her the same thing. But then two days after I got here, I'm told, well, you have to leave. You have to move. Um... I'm getting thrown out two days after I move in here because they want to do something different with the place. They did not hold their word, nothing. And I paid to move a propane tank, a trailer. This is hundreds and hundreds of dollars that I really didn't have. So my credit was maxed out. And so it, it's just really, really a mess. And how do you move when you're sick? And 
you know, they were, like, wanting me gone in five days. I mean, it was just ridiculous. They've been unreasonable. I mean, not good people. Um, it's just kind of really, really shady. And they've told me a lot of things, said a lot of things. Everything they've said has been just absolute lies. Everything from, you know, there was supposed to be a garbage can here. There's not. Um, everything. Every single thing has been a lie. There's just so much of it, I don't even listen to it. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I don't hear it. And so I can't really tell you what it is because it's like, you know, they they were saying, like, they were going to find me another place and then sent me to this place. And I'm like, uh, I didn't really want to go. And they told me it was so much money, but it was double the money when I got there. And it was also a crack alley. I just wanted to go see what it was because I knew nothing that they could recommend could be anything, probably any better than that, you know, anything that, you know, would be, you know, safe to take. Because uh, it was th that's just how these people are, you know. Nothing is real with these people. So, um, had I met the people taking over here, or, or not taking over, but that she was having help her, had I met them before I moved in, I probably would have run. I probably would have. I just get that kind of feeling, because you know, when somebody comes at you with all these words, you can kind of sense it. And the lady, you know, she seemed nice enough, but she's really not honest either. She's kind of a puppeteer that likes messing people's lives. And, you know, she kept saying that she'd help me find somebody to get out of here, don't pay anybody. But if I hadn't paid anybody, I'd still be trapped here. You know, I would never, I'd be trapped here forever, unable to open my front door. So, you know, and then, like yesterday, she kept saying, I said, I'm trying to do the best I can to, to leave. And she's saying, well, I've, I, I, been helping you and all I can say is she, yeah she's helped me I gotta really say she has she has helped create utter ruin that's what this woman does uh, and that really truly usually I see these psychopath types you know coming like way at a distance but her I kind of fell for her because she had you know a lot of illness and stuff like that and you know it's, it's easier because it makes her seem innocent and that's not the case and so, um, basically, you know, I'm not listening to a thing they say, but um, I'm going to, my previous landlord had to think about it a while, but he's going to take me back, and I'm, I'm really, really grateful, because that's one of the things I said before, that he, I really was going to miss him and miss the people there, and um, even if this place had worked out and stuff, I, I don't think it really was and um, it's not really safe here it's not great here um, it could could not you know there's certain things about it like there's a lot of traffic and for the most part you know it's there but you don't really I've lived with places where traffic is a nuisance um, listening to it go by but it's far enough off the highway that it can kind of become white noise and if you're doing anything else then it kind of fades out Sometimes it's kind of, like, disturbing, but not really, you know. But the trash, somehow they decided from when I came to look, they dumped trash here. And they were going to do all the... They've been saying they were going to do all this different stuff, but they're not. And I guarantee you, you know, they say they're going to do something different with this, but... And that's why they, you know, want me to leave. I, I think it's just... I think it's just that the people, I, I, I think that they're just kind of crazy, so... I, it's a crazy making situation so I'm going back where I came from and um, somebody was helping me so they kind of said that you know to give ha the tow man half of what you know he was charging even though that <laughs> it cost me twice as much to repair his damage as the price of the tow so otherwise I probably wouldn't have done it people were telling me not to give him a dime um, but it's really unbelievable what this woman has cost me. Uh, hundreds to move in and hundreds to move back. Now, if you're talking, we're talking Tuesday, Wednesday of a week, and they want me out by the weekend, tow guys book up like three months, three, I'm sorry, three weeks ahead of time. A lot of them are not available right now at all. Um, good ones, I'm talking professional ones, not like what I had bring me over here that I got off of Craigslist. And um, even the ones that are drop of the hat, like something like, you know, one of the RV places, 
um, they don't have time to, you know, do all the pickup, like, solar panels and stuff. So all they can do is, like, dump the trailer. And they're really, really expensive. So I ended up, like, calling RV people in Tucson, like, you know. So I'm, I'm bringing down someone from Tucson, which means, you know, I'm, it's like I'm paying a service call for them to go, like, way out of the area and then tow me. So I'm really grateful that this man is going to do it. And... I'm going to have to move the propane tank back. I really kind of felt bittersweet about leaving that. It was just the money situation and being able to, you know, if I moved over here, afford services. And that that is the hard part. And so there have been, like, some really wonderful people that have presented themselves this last week to, like, kind of help me out. And it's going to make all the difference in the world. It, it, like, makes it so that I'm not completely, completely destroyed. And I am so grateful to them. This is a shout-out. I Thank you so much. You have made my life. I was going to say day, but this is my whole life, you know. And so I just kind of wanted to take this video to let you know I got here. I don't have any Internet, so that's why I'm not posting videos anymore. And... Um, but I will be soon, so I wanted to have a video of me arriving here, but with all the, all the pandemonium and things going wrong, I didn't take a video that day, and then I was in too much pain after that, and tr just trying to survive, and, um, then I'm going to get back over there, and I'm going to try to find out, find some other planet action to get what I need, and be able to stay there, you know, and for now, it's, one wonderful thing about this is no EMFs, but I think the stress level I've had kind of counters that. It, it's, like, equally bad for my health. So um, I'm just going to try to see what all I can do um, EMF-wise. And, um, you know, I've been talking about some things in here, and I might be able to do something like... I'm going to have to figure out something with the bed because the bed isn't selling and just get the canopy in here, have this kind of be my bed, have all that go up there and do kind of like I did in the last place. Um, that would make it a lot more bearable with the, like the balloon and stuff and um, just like making some changes, you know. I actually may be able to recover more from the first move and all that. So I'm, I'm making a lot, a lot of changes. I am going back there. It, it, first he didn't know whether he wanted to let me back, and then in the whole process, um, I wanted to make sure that I was doing the right thing too. So in that time, I'd be like, well, I could try this place, or I could check this place out, or go back there. And every time I thought in my mind, go back there, I would burst into tears, because I felt homesick. I missed it. And I found myself, like, sitting in front of the TV, looking at videos of the tree by my door and the bunnies in the yard and so I realized like I really you know I'm homesick you know I wasn't there that long but it was a special place and so you see it makes me cry every time I even think about it and so I'm really looking forward to going back it won't be easy because now I've left now I'm coming back it's not going to be easy by any stretch um, it's going to be hard, but, you know, once I get integrated back there, I think it'll be okay once I kind of get recovered and all that, and I kind of know some pitfalls now, and a lot of the things that were supposed to be advantages over here that really have nothing to do with this place in particular, but, you know, places that, you know, for resources and things, um, I found out today, you know, I had somebody go shopping for me, and they don't even have, I would have to order all my food through the mail, because they just have nothing in the store. It's, like, really, really incredible. And after after I called the store to begin with, and they told me they carried it all, they really don't. So, that woman kind of warned me a couple of days ago, no, it's not what you think. Um, so, I, I think this is kind of a good thing. I mean, this could be um, a pretty situation, but it's just not. It's not. This isn't people I need to be involved in. Um, and I think the area might have just... There's something wrong with the area in itself. I mean, there's just... There's an RV park down the road, and they were really weird. Like, six months ago when I called them, they were just mean. 
and they're always that way. And so, I mean, I wouldn't have even gone over there to try to resolve it by going over there. Somebody asked me if I could, and I said, no, they're just too too crazy over there, too. It's, it's almost like something's in the well water here. But I'm I'm setting to go back. I'm setting to get towed. I'm setting to go back. And um, tomorrow. And I'm not really feeling very well, but I'm going to, you know, just put it together. I mean, I did the move last week and got everything going, so things are down on the floor. And, you know, it's uh, just a hop, skip, and a jump to finish it, which I'm going to do after I'm done watching... Uh, What's the show? Um, <laughs> I don't even remember. Orphan Black. After I'm done watching Orphan Black, I'm going to, um, you know, get up again. So I'm kind of like laying down and getting up, laying down and getting up. So that's that's it for those who might think that, you know, things didn't get worked out. At least they're they're happening. They're happening. And this is kind of, you know, it's kind of a different pretty, but I'm so busy being, like, homesick that <laughs> it's not... And, um, you know, I've got that, that horse out my window. They were going to move the horses or something, so there's a lot, a lot of flies. And that poor little horse, you know, I've been looking out the window, and they'll, like, feed it hay. At least now, this is the first day I've seen where the hay is in the middle of the a pen. Because they usually put it at the edge, and then it all blows out, and the horse, he's trying to get his nose under because he's hungry, and you know, get at the hay that's blown out past the fence, and most of the hay is, like you can see it on the ground, it's gone all over the ground, but at least they got smart and started putting it in the middle there, you know, so the horse actually seemed pretty content today, I didn't hear the fence being kicked or anything, but it's cute, you know, it, it could be cute, except that there's just so much, um, so much negativity, it's just not not great it's just not working you know so that's it for now um i'll keep you posted on everything because i want to continue with like more projects and doing more stuff and you know all that i just have to kind of get above water again and then i'll do that so um if you like subscribe comment share and have a great evening